Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 171 of the Gen Gaming Podcast. I'm your host as always, I'm Tyler, and joining me, we have the Jack of Hearts. What's up buddy? Hey, I'm doing pretty well. Got done with a busy campaign at work, but other than that, I haven't really much of anything, man. How have you been doing, Tyler? Um, I've been doing good. I guess I'm going to tell uh, Jack more than Justin. But I'm going to introduce Justin before we get into it, because it might, might, take, might be a few minutes. So what's going on, buddy? Justin's oh, back. How you uh, doing? Good. Two things. Okay. Uh, whether you're a male or female, um, a baby will try to latch onto you. Number two. <laughs> uh, Terminator Genesis is unwatchable. That is all. <laughs> the, the second one is actually unfactual, because I watched it. It's I not good. Watched but I watched a third it. of it and I couldn't go on. Wait, is that the newest one or is it the newest one? one? Okay, I haven't watched that one. Okay, okay. you might be right. And it looked so. cool to me in the previews, but yeah, that, that, that's all. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> how, anything interesting going on in your life the last two weeks that you, you care? No, no. Uh, no, I can't think of anything. <laughs> can't think of anything. Uh, I think you guys pretty much covered it last week. No. Yeah. I uh, had another daughter. Another one. Another one. Ugh. Another I know I keep daughter. saying that. Like, it's like, oh, it's another daughter. It's another per- I just made Well, we people. had another baby, and uh, she's awesome. Her name's Nora, and she's she was born September 18th. 18th. I was trying to think of it, like, Sunday. It was 10.02 p.m.? 10.02, yes. Mm-hmm. Holy shnikes. You're nice. On top of it. That's what I was doing. actually, like, not talking about that on purpose, because I knew someone would say <laughs> something. But, yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's uh, if anyone has one out there, and, uh. You think that like having another one uh, will not change things drastically? It definitely does. Like some things will not change, like the shock of having one, but like uh, some things remain exactly uh, just as shocking as the first time. Like just uh, realizing uh, first time you hold a baby, a new baby in this world, like it's like wow, it's a whole other person. And I, I don't know exactly how she. She's gonna talk. Don't know how she's gonna be exactly, but it's, it's just crazy. So yeah, it's been uh, tiring and exciting and awesome, all all wrapped into one. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's pretty much what's been going on. Okay. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Drinking Oktoberfest. It's good. Oh, it is man. delicious. It is uh, almost October. <laughs> it, it is. Um, is it at midnight tonight? At midnight tonight would be October. Yeah. Fest? Oh my gosh. It is, uh, if people don't know, it is 10.15 Central Time on September 13th, which is a Friday. Yeah. So, we're almost October. That's awesome. Yep. Um, so, like I said, I actually have two things I want to mention. Cool. First one first. Justin might have a better argument because he made people. So, But is there any better feeling in the world than when your lips are really chapped and you put chapstick on them? I mean, uh, you could tell me. For me, you... almost everything is because <laughs> chapstick never works for me. Oh, okay. I don't know why. I have weird lips. Always you're my chap- go-to all year round. I was like, "What's better, childbirth? The, the beauty of childbirth or putting chapstick on chapped lips?" Yeah, I go with childbirth because just just because <laughs> uh, chapstick never <laughs> works for me. Maybe <laughs> not not having a child that I know of. I'm gonna go with child. I'm gonna go with chapstick. Yes, yeah. understandable. It feels pretty, my lips been pretty chapped this week. I, 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 Might have been starting this week. Yeah, you know, I just they go chap all year round. I guess just for a long time. Yeah. I need it like really bad. changing the seasons. It gets really bad for me. Yeah. So I, I went and bought some chapstick after like three days of just dealing with it because I, I just you know once you go to work, like it doesn't really bother me until I get to work. And mm-hmm. then once you're at work, kind of fucked until yeah. you get off work, and I don't think about it once I go. That dry work. wind, man. Yeah. Around here, anyway, it's coming from the northwest. Really, I noticed it was chapping my lips this week. Yeah. I put some chapstick on the other day. Oh man, 
so good. Yeah, it felt so oh, good. Oh, you, if you wear chaps, that does not help chap lips. What if you have a? What if you're wearing chaps, carrying a stick, putting chapsticks on? Chapstick on. That might work. That might be the best feeling in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I know what I'm going to try next season. Next time we change it, next season. going into winter, like the week of the week of Christmas, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do that. That's awesome. But also. <laughs> Something that's big to me, maybe not so much to you guys, but it's a huge deal to me. I have gone cold turkey on wrestling. Stop watching wrestling. What? Yeah. Yes. Really? Uh, what propelled so, this? Um, I don't know how much we want to talk about this because we're a video game podcast, but we talk about we talk about wrestling on here, and everybody knows I'm a wrestling fan. Uh, I've been watching wrestling since like '95. I pretty much, probably haven't missed. I, I maybe would missed. A week, like maybe not a week, but like a dozen, two dozen weeks of wrestling in that time period, um, and it's just so the last few years now they went they moved Raw to three hours, three hours and fifteen minutes or so, and then you got SmackDown that's two hours, then if you, then you got NXT that's one hour, then you got then you got you got pay per views once a month that's three hours, and then you got now you get the pre shows and post shows for both shows. That's an additional hour on each of those things. Um, is this once a month? This is every, every week. week. Oh Raw has a gosh. pre and post every show. week, oh Justin. So that's a lot. If of you want to watch, so yeah, here's my thing. So recently, it, it's just been wrestling. WWE, just as it's done at WWE, I like Ring of Honor. I like TNA. I like New Japan Pro Wrestling. I like um, Lucha um, Lucha Underground. Uh, Underground. CMLL. I pay attention to all that stuff. I don't watch all of it, but I pay attention to it a lot. Yeah. At least. Very WWE, conscious I watch of what's going on. Yeah. And I, I pick out my stuff. So and so just WWE alone, I just want to point this out. They do every other every other Sunday now. So they did a brand split. So they have two big shows every week. They have Raw and they have SmackDown. They split the, the rosters up on the both shows. So now, now you have, if you want to watch all the wrestlers, you have to watch both shows. Before it was just like, Raw was a big show. SmackDown would just basically be like recaps and like shit that was like uh, you see a lot of the same matches from Raw on SmackDown and then shit that happened on SmackDown you see on Raw again if it was slightly different. So it was, SmackDown was a missable show. Now you have to watch it if you want to keep track of everything that's going on. So now we're looking at three hours, fifteen minutes on Monday, two hours on Smack uh, uh, SmackDown on Tuesday, one hour of NXT on Wednesday, and then you then every other Sunday you have a four hour sh- pay per view. Um, so it takes up. It, I, I thought about this every two weeks, seven nights a week, seven every so every fourteen days, seven nights I am watching wrestling. That it, it, give or take, that's about a, ten, eleven hours of just WWE a week, ten, eleven hours. I'm I'm, I'm going to, and for a long time now. The, the matches, the in ring has been fantastic, but I can watch really good wrestling anywhere. And it's just at this point, the bar is set so high that even really good wrestling matches, you just kind of numb to them. Um, and you, especially in WWE where you, there's so much content, you're seeing a lot of the same matches over and over again. Uh, like I've seen The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler like 30 fucking times. They're really good wrestling yeah. each other, but you've seen it 30 fucking times. So it doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, you hard thing to keep fresh. Yeah, and that's the problem. Is it hasn't been fresh. The stories haven't been good. Uh, the character, the the, the 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 wrestlers have been great, but their characters have been garbage. And it's not so much their fault. Sometimes, sometimes you're just a lot of times they're just given garbage ass characters. Um, that's so true. for me, it just came down to it was just for a long time I have not like I'll be on I'll be watching wrestling and I'll just be on my phone half the time just like reading Twitter. The most en- I realized this a few months ago. The most enjoyable part about wrestling to me is on being on Twitter, reading all the people I follow about wrestling, listening to their points of views on wrestling, and then listening to my podcast about wrestling. So on top of my eleven hours a week I spend watching just WWE. Plus all the other stuff, which is maybe say four hours more, fifteen hours a week of just watching wrestling, and then the six hours or so a week I've listened to podcasts about wrestling. On top of the, maybe the five or six hours I spend a week reading news about the behind the scenes shit, what's going on with wrestling. So you're talking this is a whole another. This is a 30, 25, 30 hour week of just of just wrestling for me. Um, and I just look at just and it, it's not fun. It's just not fun anymore. Yeah. To quote CM Punk, who said this on Twitter. Just before he quit WWE a few years ago, this poop ain't no, this poop ain't fun no more, and that's what it's been for me. It, it's I was actually on so Sunday night was a big was a big pay per view, and yeah, it was not fun, and I just 
I was editing really? the podcast, and it's just like I was dreading it all day watching this this pay per view. And there was a sense of dread I've never felt before watching wrestling or Damn. upcoming like even even mediocre pay per views that were like ah there'll be some good stuff on it. I'm like just, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about that. I was excited about nothing. I was not looking forward to it, and it's just I watched it. And I was bored out of my fucking mind, and I was editing the podcast while I was doing it, and I had I'm just kind of like I don't even fucking care. You know, it's like there's matches, Bailey versus Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. I should be excited about that match. Three of the best women re- wrestlers in the world having a, wrestling at the same time against each other. I should be excited about that. I know Justin's confused right now, but I should be excited I'm about confused. that. I'm and I, I didn't care. I just didn't care. Just because there was no reason to be excited about that. Um, so it just, hmm. I, it, it broke me. And then Monday I was sitting, I was getting ready to watch it. I'm just like, the fuck am I doing? Like, I it just looking. Uh, look, I'm, I was looking at this from an entertainment aspect, just from entertainment alone. From my time, so right now at work, it's getting busier, so I'm working more hours, so I have less free time. Yeah, and just from all of the shit that's out there, from there's more entertainment out there right now than any other time in the history of mankind. Like I can find entertaining shit at pretty much one click of a button. And I look at like, yep, just like all, all these great video games coming out right now mm-hmm. it's it's maybe not all not a bunch but there's gonna be some good video games coming out here soon um a lot of tv shows are coming back now you know movies are coming out now things like that just there's so much stuff fighting for your time from an entertainment app oh yeah dude. that that i legitimately look forward to and i enjoy playing watching whatever why am i wasting 25 hours a week of my free time which makes up most of my free time on wrestling that I don't enjoy. I, when, I, when I'm watching it, I'm either on my phone or I'm bitching about watching wrestling. So it's just like, that's what it turned into. And it's just like, so I went cold turkey. I have no idea what happened on Monday. I have no idea what happened on Tuesday. I have no idea what happened on Wednesday. I, I completely deleted my podcast. I, I deleted them off my DVR. I, uh, I unfollowed every person that has to, outside of like, you know, I mean, Jack, but the people I followed specifically for wrestling, I unfollowed them on Facebook, Twitter, all that shit. Got it out of my life. I'm not saying this is goodbye forever. Yeah. But for a while, I needed a break something, from wrestling. Something. You need some fresh air. You need... Yeah. You need something. You know, Tyler, you know, what this sounds like is exactly what I went through around the time, around 2010 and stuff, when I just got really burnt out on professional wrestling. And that was mostly... Due to overexposure of uh, not only the shows, though, but the quality of the stuff down the mid to late 2000s in WWE at the time was garbage. A lot of it was garbage. And the thing about it was, I took about a year off, at least a solid year off, just to go ahead and just recharge my things. It wasn't until CM Punk had his infamous pipe bomb moment that I started getting reintroducing myself and I started getting back into watching wrestling. And I'm kind of like where you are at right now in terms of, okay, I do enjoy professional wrestling. I do enjoy certain matches and stuff like that. But ever since SummerSlam, I've just been like, I've not watched anything. Why? Because I don't give a shit right now. I work 40 hours a week. I have little time to go and spend on something I absolutely dread to watch. And the thing is, if I'm going to spend my time wisely, I'm going to be either on YouTube watching some videos that I want to watch, actually watching people who are entertaining me instead of being bored out of my fucking gourd, or I can actually go through and play through a bunch of games like I did back in July and yeah. August. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's just like, not to say all of it sucks, there's there's like, in that 10-11 no, hours of no. content a week, there's a few good hours of content, but the problem is, the bad part of it is just it's so bad i mean agreed bad and it's just <laughs> it's almost unwatchable yeah at this like some of the stuff there's like they have like there's 70 80 90 wrestlers on that roster they they focus a lot on 10 of them and the rest of it is just like oh here's these guys and it just doesn't mm-hmm. matter and, and like a, sometimes they'll, like and they'll give them this like we spent five minutes writing this story it doesn't make any sense or it's just really dumb and it's just like awkward and bad and it's just unwatchable bad and that's yeah I don't know it's it's frustrating because I think the in-ring is the best it's ever been um 
as far as just across the board, especially WWE. Does that mean like the moves and stuff they're doing? The, the wrestling play? matches themselves is like the best ever. The match choreography, the oh, tempo, yeah. like the really like perfect, uh, the moves, yeah. everything the else is movies. better stories, quality than how ath- it was. The athletic ability, all of it is better. It's not like the 80s where it's just a bunch of guys on steroids punching and kicking a lot. Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's a lot better now. Um, so <laughs> just, just but like, in terms <laughs> of the booking, but in terms of the booking and the character development, it's absolute yeah, garbage. It, it's like basically watching two G.I. Joe figures do a lot of athletic moves and do this and that, but yeah, there's no hardly any payoff yeah. of this certain character build They've up. been creatively... My, my, Justin's still laughing <laughs> over this. Oh, But it's just... They, they've been creatively bankrupt for about three or four years now. And every now and again they get a good story in there, but <laughs> the most part it's just like they'll start a storyline and all of a sudden they'll just drop a storyline. Or they'll, like, they'll be doing a story... Yep. And like something would be bad, and they just pretend like it never happened. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't want to make this a huge thing, like as far as like on the podcast. But I just thought, you know, as far as we talk about wrestling has been a big part of the show, or at least a big chunk of this part of the show mm-hmm. for since the beginning. Uh, and I just I mentioned it. Also, should let you know. Uh, I was going. I'll let Jake know. I was going to let him know on the show. Uh, I have deleted. I have canceled my account to WWE Network, which I've had since day one. Wow. Um. So. After October 5th, uh, you guys might have to get your own account if you guys are interested in watching wrestling. Uh, hey, man, no so, problem. Yeah. Hey, man. I just want to say good for you for uh, feeling a certain way and doing something about it. Yeah. Dude, yeah. At, least, at least you let us like watch a lot of the content, Jake like, and I. You know, that's freaking yeah. awesome. There's something going on and you feel like you had to do it. So. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, I think it's a good thing. It's a bummer because I love wrestling. It's one of my favorite things in the world. And it just sucks that it sucks. Yeah. Hopefully, um, it ends up all working out good. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's not goodbye forever, but I think yeah. it's like I, at least I don't know. I, I'm gonna give it a month is kind of my, my idea, yeah. and like see where I'm at in a month. And if I still miss it, I'll go. I'll you know I'll see what's going on. If I don't, then if I if if I don't miss it, then I'll just keep going on until whenever. Um, so yeah. Uh, but moving on to uh, some uh, to video games, with, which is the, the show is actually about. Um, we're gonna we're gonna jump into what we've been playing. Uh, let's start with Justin actually, because you've been gone oh. for a couple weeks. Um, go oh. ahead and talk. About okay, uh, I have been playing uh, two games. Uh, one of them is a, a pretty shallow game, but it's been a lot of fun. It's like a dollar sixty eight, I think, something like dollar ninety nine. PlayStation uh, deal like a week ago, two weeks ago. It's uh, Pac Man 256. And uh, I've always liked the old arcade Pac Man. Uh, you know, you collect the pellets and you run away from the ghosts usually until you get a certain, I don't even know what's called, power up, let's just say. Yeah. And all of a sudden the ghosts start blinking and you chase after them. And uh, it's all on one screen. And you can go like from, you can go off the screen and come back around. I feel like holes, I think, on even on the old one. It's been a while since I've played the old one. But uh, that's basically what you do. And uh, you try to get high scores and, you know, go as fast as you can. So uh, Pac-Man 256, uh, it has the same concept there. But uh, you are actually kind of forced to move upwards. Kind of like uh, the layout or like... The, the it looks like Pac Man like the grid you know the kinda. board the board yeah there you go and it's like but you're constantly having to run away from the bottom because like there's this black glitch coming at, up is it kind of like Super Mario mm-hmm. Brothers three with like on the on the when like the left side is like moving Co- kind so you of can't same go concept back. okay came so, same concept where you're going up okay yeah, can't, same concept though exactly and it's like it's like glitchy thing you can kind of go into it a little bit. But if you go too far, you're dead. Okay. And uh, there's, like, different kinds of ghosts in it. And, like, you're just climbing up. You're trying to get as far as you can, basically. And it's all it's kind of narrow. You can only go so far to left and right. And uh, it, it, what's really weird, actually, about this game is, like, how Pac-Man's, like, uh, it's square with the TV or whatever you're playing it on. This is, like, at an angle, like, f- not quite 45 degrees, kind of slanted. Hmm. And... That's not how your controller is. So it actually f- feels weird for a while, like actually like going left and right when it's actually like going northwest and southeast. 
like if you were to actually do the directions. Yeah. It feels kind of odd, uh, but it's it's pretty easy to get used to. In this game, I actually like played it nonstop, like I uh, like not nonstop. I played it a whole bunch of times, like every day I play it, like for a while. And uh, my oldest daughter, Cadence, would play it, and she's four and a half, and she enjoys it a lot. And uh, she's she kind of understood some of it, like uh, how the ghosts are bad. And she yell. And she the ghost would get her and stuff. But she had fun playing it. It was it was enjoyable to, to play, and I I'll, I'll still play it every once in a while. But I I kind of feel like I got my fill on it a little bit. Like um like there's little challenges. Like what's kind of cool is like instead of just like the power up where you can eat the ghost, which really doesn't do anything in this one, like that much. Uh, like you get power ups like fire, and ice, and uh, bombs. Oh, it's wow. kind of cool, and like you can get all these like, and you know, there's four different kinds of ghosts that I've found. Orange ones randomly come down the screen. Uh, I think they're pink ones. They will go. Th oh, they stay where they are, and then you go past like their line of sight. They'll chase after you, and then you have the red ones that will go. Like they'll just chase after you no matter what. But they they go your speed, so if you're going, they'll, they'll never touch you. But they're always there, coming after you. But the pink ones go faster. They're kind of creepy. Oh, you know, have that's ones, cool. Yeah, like the pink ones actually go really fast. So you gotta get out of the way. And then, <laughs> really fast. <laughs> uh, there's like ones that are in groups, and they go like side to side. And depending on what color they are, they'll act different too. But it's really a simple game. And there's challenges in it like the, like, oh, use, kill 20 ghosts with uh, the fire power up. I did like 17 of them. You get like a, you know, I play on the PS4 and you get unlock like a, a, a achievement or whatever. Uh, Justin, it's a trophy. A tro oh, a trophy. God. Yeah. And <laughs> Fucking noob. Noob. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I did that. So uh, I'll play it every once in a while. It's kind of cool. Um, there was something I was going to say about it, but I kind of forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, I. it took me forever to figure out. I was trying to figure out why is it called 256? Pac Man 256. What is going on here? Well, come to find out, uh, if you eat 256 pellets in a row, which is actually pretty hard to do in this game, because not every path, not every uh, like path has pellets. You have to actually like there's some that have missing segments, so like you kind of gotta like think ahead of time if you want to try to get. Mm. If you get 256, you everything on the screen dies. It's like a huge like okay. mega bonus thing. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for that game. And the other game I started playing is uh, Severed. I ended up pick. I ended up really? picking it up. You Sounds kind of weird. Ended Wii U. Wii U. So is, is the 3DS one out yet? I don't know yet. I don't know. I know we get a free code when no. it comes out. though. I don't think it's out yet. I think okay. it's coming out soon though. Do you? Do you? Okay. Do you know if you get the, the free code for it? I haven't looked. Okay. I haven't even looked into that yet. But I remember you saying that. Right. I just didn't know if it's a limited time thing. Or I think. I think. Uh, I think anyone that buys it will get it. Okay. Cool. I'm pretty sure. Right. Um. Yes, I started playing this game. I was actually going to buy a different game, but I ended up not getting it yet, which was uh, Virginia. Yes. Probably going to purchase that pretty soon. Sounds interesting. Uh, well, this game, like you said last week, if you want to listen, was, or two weeks ago, was made by the same people, Drinkbox, I think? Made Guacamelee? Drinkbox. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Drinkbox okay. Studios. They made this game. Uh, first off, art style looks actually very similar. Yeah. The colors and the... Yeah, the way it looks. Yeah. Um, I will say, like, uh, after I played this game for about an hour, I really started getting into it because I got to, like, a, a boss, like, a boss fight in it, and, like, I absolutely, like, I was like, wow, this game is awesome. Like, I actually really like this game now. Um, it's like, I'm going to make some comparisons here. Cause it's only way I can, actually, when I was playing, I was, I was trying to think of what it reminded me of. Like, why I like it so much. Mm -hmm. Like, are one of the main reasons. And it's like, I feel like this is one of the great examples of what you can do with touchscreen uh, gaming and with unique ways of uh, fighting enemies and stuff. To me, personally, I'm going to go more into this here in a second uh, with this franchise, anyways. It reminded me of uh, how Skyward Sword actually really realized motion controls and designed everything around it. 
like in a really unique, fun way. Like I've never played a game like this before, and it's, it actually feels new to me. Mm. That's how this game makes me feel. Like just the way that the enemies are set up and how you attack them and stuff. Like it's like, oh man, this is really good. I'm like, I have I enjoy actually using the uh, stylus and the slashing the enemies. Uh, there's one that's like, uh, there's a bunch of them, but uh, one that's really sticks out to me is this uh, character. Character, <laughs> it's like a big, big square of eyeballs, and like uh, you gotta hit the white ones that open up, and it's, it's all time. It's all based on time, like spinning around because they have other enemies too. You're trying to take care of, and uh, you knock out the uh, certain eyeballs. They're kind of hard to hit. Yeah. And then like you start swiping like the main eyeball once it pops up. Everything has like a weakness to it. Uh, that enemy's really cool, and uh, I'm gonna go back to the Zelda thing here in a second. And this other enemy I just found is like, basically to me it's like this weird like veiny body. That's kind of the way you kill it. It's kind of like symbolizing cancer. You're you're like attacking cancer. That's how I look at it anyways. Then you're like destroying the, the those parts that make it spread. Then you end up killing the enemy, and you you know you, you sever off like the limbs and stuff. And you collect them and you upgrade stuff. Uh, no, the uh, besides the Skyward Sword thing, when I was playing this game. I couldn't stop thinking how much this game is like a Zelda game to me. Like, uh, not only like the puzzles and like lighting uh, certain things, like make doors open and like pathways. There's actually like this. I'm not sure if it's like you can go in any order for the dungeons, but I went to uh, the Crow dungeons, and like the music, literally, like seriously, sounds like Forest Temple music <laughs> from Ocarina of Time, uh, mixed with uh, the Fire Temple music. It's crazy. Like, they're, like, lapped over together. So they went from making a Metroid game to a Zelda game? Kinda. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, let me get to that, too. Thanks for bringing that back up to the Guacamelee thing. I think Guacamelee was, like, a really good game. But I got kind of bored of it because I feel like I've played games like this. And this one, I'm actually going to stick to and beat this game because I feel like it's something completely new. Like, I, I really like this game. Yeah. And that's, I'm not trying to diss on Guacamelee because I think it's actually a really good game. Yeah, I understand. But I got to a point where I kind of like kind of lost interest in it. I got pretty far, I think, in the game, too. But I don't think I'll lose interest in this game because every time I find a new enemy, and even, like, the puzzles are kind of in, somewhat engaging, and the, the level design is actually really good on how you you think you're going to have to backtrack, but, like, it actually, actually works out really well, like... Oh, go down these stairs, and you're like you're right where you need to go. Yeah, it all it's rounds like, off in the end. Yeah, because yeah. at first it seems like, oh man, this game's gonna be hell. Because like you, all you, you just kind of move square by square. It's like, oh, I'm gonna have to remember all this stuff. It's it's not that bad. It's like really, I don't know. It's a really fun. To me personally, it's the freshest uh, game I've played this year. In terms of like, I actually feel like I'm doing something I haven't done before in the mm -hmm. game. I don't know. It feels really cool to me. Yeah, I get that. I like the game. I have not played it more this week. No. Uh, I have other games that just kind of like took my attention away. Yeah. In the limited time I've had time to play games this week. So, uh, I, I, like, I liked it a lot. I just uh -huh. haven't got back to it. Yeah. But I'm going, my plan is to play it more this weekend. Cool. It really helps out. Uh, real quick, one last thing is if I go upstairs, I live in a two story uh, house at the moment, and if I go upstairs to the bed, I had the Wii U, which is directly one floor below me, and that's where the living room is. It's it's I'm just within range. Oh, nice! So I can play it up in the bed, <laughs> and it's it's awesome. All right, uh, yeah, it's cool. This is, I, I, I like I said last week. I wish I could play this on 3DS more than the Wii U, though. Oh, really? I, I don't think I would just because of the size. I think that I, I think I, like the, I, I think I, I the screen the bigger screen is nicer. I think it just having a hold with one hand would be easier in the 3DS for me. Oh. You yeah. have larger hands than I do. Oh, that's I true. Have yeah, short, pudgy hands. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about that when I was playing. Like, I I usually hold it with one hand, but I kind of like usually put like on half of it, like on the leg. Yeah, and I kind of do something. It might be what I, I do. I might have to use like a different like a different style. Yeah, I was like just kind of like laying it down and just playing it that way, but it wasn't yeah. really working for me. I got I get you. It never has bothered me yet. I actually have no complaints about this game so far. It's yeah, kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I can see how that could be a problem. For yeah, real. Cause that is a, it is a big controller. But yeah, uh, Severed. Absolutely love this game so far. A surprise for me. Yeah. How do you know what it was? And you were talking about it like, a couple weeks ago. I was like, I've been excited about this for months. Yeah. I watched a video too. I was not interested at all. Hmm. Like I, I saw one uh, little tiny paragraph of review, and I was like, this sounds interesting. 
So it's cheap too. Yeah, I heard you talk about it and was like, "This sounds cool." It's like thirteen bucks or something. Like yeah, thirteen forty nine. Yeah, I think I think that bad. Uh, it's on Wii U. <laughs> I and, think it was like the exact number. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's on Wii U. It's been on Vita for a while, so yeah, yeah if you want those, check them out. I wonder how it'd work on Vita because you use your finger. Yeah, you? it's, yeah it's I wonder how it would. Be kind imagine of more of the same. They even get the, the trophies from the Vita version into. They put it into the. Uh, Oh yeah, the actual indie version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's cool. Like those cool <clears throat> indie games always have trophies, no matter what system it's on. Yeah, like uh, that's how uh, Shovel Knight was too. I think it's just because they like they made it. They they made it with the other consoles. They just like left them in there. Shovel Knight though came out I think first on Wii U, but oh, it's not, I think it was on might have been Steam for Steam and Wii U at the same time or something. Oh, was it? I can't remember how it worked. Either way. It's yeah. cool. Like, yeah. it's... Because most old games always had that kind of stuff inside of it. Yeah. Very true. They kind of disappeared and went to a whole different thing. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, anything else, though? <laughs> no. Okay. That's uh, that's it for this week. Okay. Uh, I'm going to jump into what I've been playing, actually, real quick. I'm going to mix up. Usually, I go last. I'm, I want to go. We're going to make... We're going to make Gables wait. <laughs> uh, so, I've been playing a couple games this week. Uh, I talked about last week. I beat Bioshock 1. I decided to jump into Bioshock Infinite. Um, I'm going to let Justin borrow my copy of Bioshock yes. uh, so you can play it. Um, Excited. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing that a little bit this week. I'm only a couple hours into it, but I, I beat it before. Um, it was in my honorable mentions for favorite game of all time. So it's in my t- it's between 30 and 40. I can't remember exactly where. Um, but going through this again, it's... I'll say this. I, I wish... When they remade these games, they kept the control. They made the controls. They updated the controls to Bioshock One and Two. I don't know about Two, but at least One, because the controls in One are a lot different than what your average shooter are. So it's just like That's a lot of two like, was too. yeah, maybe it's probably the same thing. I haven't played Two yet. Um, I, I mean, I played Two in like when it first came out, but I mm-hmm. played it in its collection. Um, so. The, in Bioshock 1, like, the controls are very wonky, just like the jumping and the crouching, uh, collecting treasure, shit like that. It's very different than what you're used to in shooter games. Um, and this, in Bioshock Infinite, it is, um, it's kind of more what you're used to in shooter games, as far as the controls go. So I'm, but I'm so used to, it's a Bioshock game, so I'm used to the Bioshock controls now. So now I'm constantly doing things, like, I, I mean, to reload my weapon, uh, but instead I'm collecting treasure or I'm in the collect treasure but instead I reload my weapon and I wasted a, a my health pack or I wasted um, something or I did something I didn't want to do yeah. um, a lot so that's really my one big issue with this game but overall it's still a really good game going to Arcadia is awesome uh, I it's I, the gameplay itself I think is better um, I enjoy I enjoyed the uh, the powers though more in Bioshock than I do the Vigors in uh, Infinite, uh, just because the change they made like they changed from like the firepower to now your basically your firepower is a grenade, um, kind of thing. Or there's some cool there's some cool what there's cool power ups you have, but I, I still like I said this back when, back when it first came out, um, Bioshock Infinite. Um, I felt the same way, but I liked the powers more in Bioshock than I did uh, Bioshock Infinite. Um, but overall, I, the gameplay itself is more fun, and then the world is fun. Um, it's still incredible. Um, Rapture is always going to still be one of the coolest um, uh, settings, I think, in gaming history, though. And Arcadia is great, but it's nowhere near, I think, as cool as Ar- Rapture. As far as just when you go in there, it just... I, but I'm always, I've always liked the um, kind of the claustrophobic feel, mm-hmm. and I get that more in Rapture than I do in Arcadia. It reminded me a lot of those, uh, Spheres. The old like Michael Crichton book about the city underneath the ocean. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know much about it, but I just... oh yeah, it's always when I played it. Anyways, it reminded me of that. Okay, I knew about that when I was a kid. I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, when I, I played a game like that. So I've always thought of when I played the game when I played Bioshock originally. I thought of Event Horizon, the thing, movies. Oh yeah, um, Event and, Horizon for sure. Yeah, and the thing. Yeah, and Alien, of course. Yeah, uh, three of my my favorite horror movies. Um, so yeah, uh, it's still a really great game. Uh, if you guys haven't played the games, check them out. Uh, if, if you like the Bioshocks, it still lives up. It's not it's not nostalgia. It's still still fucking great games. Um, That's good. Yeah. Um, the other game I played, uh, this came out a couple years ago on Steam, actually. And I was 
really good things about this and um, it finally came out I think last week or two weeks ago on PS4 and Xbox One it's called Jazz Punk I talked about last week I, I bought it but I haven't played it yet um, this I've been thinking all week how I wanted to talk about this game how, 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 how to talk about this game it is you talk about like one of the most unique experience like Severed being the most most different most unique experiences you've had in a long time gameplay wise yeah for sure um this is kind of the same way for me where this is it's so it's made in the unity engine uh-huh. um, which is very popular for like the cheaper um yeah. steam games like you see a lot Back of games 256 was made with unity oh really yep oh uh, okay i know that um, so a lot of games are made in the Unity engine nowadays, especially like smaller end companies and smaller end developers. Um, so it doesn't look very good from a graphical standpoint or just an art style, uh, anything like that. But this game, so basically it's like, it's like 1959 and you're a spy and it's almost like a, a James Bond kind of knockoff thing. Interesting. Where you're trying to like get back this dictator that's been kidnapped and you're going in. So he starts off. Uh, really cool intro, by the way. It's like it's very much like a James Bondy type of intro. Um, so you're going in, you're going to like this train station that's also it's actually a hidden like base for like it's not even like I don't even want to say like a, like a government underground base. It's just like a tr- like one train and the desk in it and like a chalkboard. And this guy's like, "Here's your mission. Do this. You take this pill, and then you go on. You're in this area, um, and like you're like these weird like." round figures like um, i don't know how to, like not stick figures like, they they made the bodies but it's very cheaply done like kind of like Can you see features of a face or anything or is it like a silhouette it, i mean there's features of a face but it's not like okay. it's not much there yeah to it sometimes it's just like it's just like a, the, you see the black outline and then it's just the white body or it might be a white outline with a black body kind of oh. thing with, the, with the, you see the tie some people have a top hat and a mustache um <laughs> it's all very like it looks very cheaply done but this game is like a bunch of like, what the fuck? Moving on, kind of thing. Like it's like you can beat the game in probably like forty five minutes. You just want to do the straight storyline really? stuff. But the fun of this game is doing all the side stuff and going around. Like all the levels are really small. There's uh-huh. like five levels. They're all very small. But there's so much like weird shit that we interact with everything. Yeah. It's so fucking funny. And I'm not talking like crying funny. But it's just like a lot of like a lot of laughs and chuckles. Everything in this game is fucking dumb, and I sounds fucking awesome. Love this game. I wish this game. If this game was coming out this this year, it'd be probably it would easily be in one of the top five games of this year. I played. So it could easily. Be, Go ahead. I was saying it still could be on your, like your list or whatever. I, I won't put it on there just because it came up from 2014. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna, yeah, but um. You can. I, 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 maybe I will. I don't know. But this game is so... God, I beat this game twice in 48 hours. I have Bioshock Infinite in front of me. I beat this game twice in 48 hours, and I got the Platinum on it. I didn't even try to get the Platinum on it. And I got it. It's just like... So, some of the events that happen, like, one level, you're on a beach, and you get the... Uh, what's the metal, metal detector? Metal detector. And you're going around the beach, and you're just finding weird shit. And you find uh, Han Solo and Carbonite. Or like, <laughs> there's one level where you're like, you're just like, you find this frog oh. who lost. The, he has like a cookie that has a Wi-Fi password on it to Starbucks, but it's Star B U X, and it's on. It's in the middle of the street. So you play. You're in a playing Frogger, and you're playing Frogger to go, to go get the the Wi-Fi cookie in the middle of the street. And every time you die and you get ran over, it goes back, and it's him. He's he's now he's got a crutch, and he's got one arm. He's like, not again, please. And you restart the fucking thing. And you just, I did this like 20 times of me trying to get the stupid fucking Wi-Fi cookie for him. And then it's just like, you. all right, now you're in a movie theater. And you're throwing popcorn at people. It's just, it sounds stupid. And it is. But it's way funnier than, I'm giving, than what I'm saying gives justice to. That sounds to. cool. This game is fantastic. This is a great fucking game. Um, you, even with me doing all the, I, I don't know if I did everything. But I found most of the shit. And it took me like two hours to beat this game. Nice. And I went back, and I probably beat it in like an hour and a half. How much time. is this game? Uh, I think it's like fourteen bucks, fifteen bucks, maybe. 15 bucks. I got it for like eleven dollars because it's on sale the first week. Well, they use a discount, oh. um, so I think it's like eleven, somewhere eleven, fifteen dollars range. Um, this game is fantastic. I just want to say that everybody check this game out. This game is awesome. 
I uh, will have to check this game out before the year is ended. Yeah, um, or at least I, I would check out some videos. Um, yeah, I'm going to check it out. Mm-hmm. Not too many to spoil the game, but just, just enough to kind of give you an idea what the game yeah. is. Because it, it's got a style of humor, and I don't know, it's not for everybody. But uh, I would say at least check some shit out, because this game is fucking Sounds fantastic. But um, Gables, Jack, what's yeah. up, buddy? What have you been playing? Well... Well, this is kind of an odd topic for me because uh, I have played absolutely nothing this week. <laughs> I know, it's sort of anticlimactic. It's like, oh, hey, let's set it up for Jack. And I was like, eh. But, uh, no, man, ever since I finished Uncharted 4, man, I've just been kind of uh, drifting and seeing what I could just think about playing, you know? It's like, I I want to play something, but... I don't have any idea what I want to play. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? No, what's no? Jazz punk. <laughs> did you no. did you see that Facebook video I posted? I, I tagged you in. Yes, I did see that, and that was really random and kind of. That's jazz punk for you. So I, I posted this on Facebook. So I found this dub, like this championship belt going back to yeah, our back to my, and, and then all of a sudden this guy bursts out of the wall, and it's Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, it's not really him, but it's basically yeah, make fun of him. You know, it's and him. then you end up having a wrestling match with this guy that basically is Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> and then there's also a, there's also a, a I'm, I'm going I'm sorry I'm going I'm going I can't I love jazz punk so much guys <laughs> I love this game I just want to keep talking about it. I want to I want to watch him play this game so bad so this is one part I'm going back oh, and no. again. so he didn't play anything. <laughs> So I'm going to go, stage. I'm taking your 10 minutes, I'm going to call it Jasper. <laughs> no, so Jeff, there's this one part in this level, it turns into Street Fighter, guys, there's a Honda, it just randomly parks somewhere, you go up to it, and you get to a Street Fighter fight, the name of the character you're fighting, it's a, it's a Honda car, it's called Some Honda. Some Honda. Nice. <laughs> I Some Honda. I love this game, guys. And Jim Strong is in this game, which I didn't know about until after I beat the game. He's in he, the he, game? He's, uh, he has two, well, he's not in the game, but he, he plays, a, he's a voice actor. In the game. That's cool. And there's a Fruit Ninja mini game in there somewhere. I'm playing Jazz Punk when you guys leave. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and play Jazz Punk again. Yeah, I used to watch him. <laughs> this game's fucking great. I love Jazz Punk. Yeah. Hey, dude, I'm glad you I have not been this excited to talk about a game. In... I mean, I shouldn't say that. But as far as talking about the game, I don't think I've been this excited about talking about That's it. That's awesome. This game's great, guys. Everybody. <laughs> I just want to give this guy more money. I feel like I ripped him off, you know? I'm going to send him 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to send him a $50 bill. Might as $50 well, bill. Might as well. I'm going to buy eight copies. Well, I guess we know the name of the episode of this podcast. Jazz Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody buy Jazz Punk, please. Jazzy. Just, just buy it. Punk. Jazz, Jazzy Punk. <laughs> That's the name of the podcast. That's how you said it. <laughs> He didn't want Jack and Ga- Jack and for Gables being the podcast title, but I made it anyways. Oh. So now Josie Punk is going to oh. be the name of this game. This Josie Punk. I don't want that. Well, now it's not going to be Josie <laughs> Punk. You, you made a point, Justin. I see. Damn it. But speaking of paying extra money for games, here's a question I have for you guys. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't really know what the, so much what the question is. But the overall topic I wanted to yeah. discuss. You got to figure out where you begin with this. Everybody. So, the price of games. Where do we sit on that? As far as like, what would you be willing to go to for games? Uh, really, that's what the starting point I have is like. People have said for a long time, games are the most expensive they've ever been. And uh, the prices stayed the same for. To make. 12 years. Yeah. As far as like making games, it's way more than what it was 15, 20, 30 years ago. But the price has generally stayed the same. Um, kind of. I mean, you got to look at like the value of the dollar. For really. The, I mean, back then, back when the Atari, Atari days, games were 50 yeah, bucks, 40, 50 bucks, which is crazy. Um, imagine paying 40 bucks for ET. Ugh. I think Zelda was like 80 or 90 bucks. For yeah. Guys. I remember 64 game. I remember Super Mario, uh, Superman 64 was $70 at Walmart. Oh, my. Oh my gosh! That's, that's, that's like one of the best games ever made. That's too. like a 1998 money too. So that's crazy. Oh man. Um. So yeah, <laughs> I'm just kind of curious. Uh, some I, I was thinking, of, I've been thinking about kind of like for a while now. Really, it's been talked about for a long time with going to this new generation where prices of games go up. I'm just, what would be the breaking point really for you with a game like like 
uh, like where the sixty dollar mark if they goes were, up, yeah, like a triple A title. So let's say you're think about your favorite franchise for every game, like like yeah, uh, say Breath of the Wild's coming out. Yeah, what would at one point would you start to think about? That's gonna be to, skewed ooh. though. For me, it's gonna be skewed. I know obviously because there's, uh, there's that fandom to it, but you're but this is like this is like the game you're most anticipating. Okay. What would what point would you start? Would you like you right now? You're like no doubt sixty bucks. I'm buying that game, this, right? Oh yes. Okay. But what point would you start to think? Would you start to think if about it? If they told me, if they said, there will be no season pass, there will be no DLC, there will be no in-app or in-game purchases necessary. Everything that will ever be on this game is yours right now. I would hope it's sixty dollars, but like. <laughs> But I would I would go up. No, no, I wouldn't. I don't know. It's a hard thing, man. Uh, it's because it, this question is like I will I will pay money to play that game. That's like a. Who I don't know. To be honest with you, for some reason my judgment is cloudy. I understand. I feel like Yoda. I look at like I mean for me there's like there's like no if we were asking this question about a year ago of Melga Salt Five. I mean, now I would pay a hundred bucks for that game easily. Uh, like one twenty kept jumping in my head. That's yeah. double the price. Obviously, yeah. Obviously, I guess. But, so here's, <laughs> but here's the, so here's the, like that's your favorite uh, game. Think about like games like you're sort of interested in. Are games you're interested enough to buy day one, but you're not like you never put so. Color Splash. I want to buy it for sixty bucks. I want that game next Friday. What if it was sure? What if it was seventy? Seventy. God damn! Is it fifty bucks? bucks? It's sixty. Oh, it is sixty. I oh, hope I was, so. Oh, it's fifty. I think it's sixty. I oh, hope okay. It is. So seventy bucks? Uh, seventy bucks. Uh, it's only ten dollars more. Eighty bucks? I would jump to seven. Like, the thing is, like, with that game though, I'd wonder. Wait, wait, wait. If uh, Mario Kart Eight was sixty bucks, why is Color Splash uh seventy well, that's, bucks? We're just that's like this. I know. I know. It's, I just it's, think a, it's a dumb <laughs> get to do thing. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ah. You know, I think I'd I'd get to like seventy bucks and I'd, after seventy bucks I'd boycott I wouldn't just, I wouldn't buy it. I'd boat boat my wallet. Yeah. Understandable. You know. I mean And not so much like I don't want to say boat for your wallet kind of thing, but like as far as like if if the sixty dollar thing just went away and it was just like just okay. Game, it was at the wild wild west of like fucking game prices, like Call of Duty now is 90 bucks Battlefield's 90 bucks uh, some games are 80 bucks some games are 40 bucks some games are 30 bucks you know like I, I just so much in that point like I, I'm just kind of curious what's the breaking point for us as gamers as like, far as like for the, okay like uh, this you got anything to say Jack before I say something huh oh I'm actually just waiting for what you guys are going to oh, say oh <laughs> um, I was going to say if you put it that way there's really no set standard. Man, there, there'd be some really... It would be a big change in... There, there probably wouldn't be, like, DLC. I think uh, there still would be, definitely. You really? You might be right. Uh, I guess it'd, it'd be so... It'd be so uh, up to the developer and everything, and depending on what how big this... How long this game is. How much uh, they think it's worth. How many... How much they think you would... You know, actually put into it to make a decision. It's it's, it's super hard to say because, like, out of all the games that I can think of now, you could not go above without the DLC and stuff. You couldn't go above eighty bucks. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think it'd be like the bubble. Like, I don't think you could unless unless like there's some type of game out there that we don't know about that drastically changes. Like, oh wow, this game is like this. Uh, this like it's I don't know something we can't even fathom. This is worth 120 bucks. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that even will ever exist. I don't know. No, as far as, like... But what, just game-wise. What 120 bucks means in our economy currently, no. I mean, maybe in 50 years, who knows what, which, what 120 bucks will mean in 50 years, though. Which... A dollar is. It just might be. It's hard to... It's <laughs> hard to, like, say because, like, some games do cost that much if you want, like, DLC and stuff, so... Yeah. I don't know. It's It's... It's a weird, I just mean it's like the flat, thing. like this yeah. is what, on the disc shit kind of thing. Uh, it's hard to say, man. I, I think like, I, I, I know they come up with this, like people that make games have the same questions probably every time. 
mm. all the time. And I think like that's why there is paid DLC and stuff is because it it seems like t- for them it's it's a night nice, it's a somewhat less for some reason I think it's like only certain people will buy the DLC and I think they think it's a less dickish move to make it so a more casual person a, a more core gamer a more casual like that just wants them just a game the normal game without any DLC will just they don't want to make them have to like have a bad taste in their mouth mm-hmm. like buying a game for a hundred bucks uh, I think that they they do have the DLC though because they know there are diehard fans that will pay for the DLC yeah, and I mean diehard fans. Like I oh, think yeah. those are the people that do pay for the DLC. Oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> like, yeah, and I, I just I think that they wouldn't. It's a, definitely a battle that they have all the time, and no game does it the same. You know, uh, there's like season passes. It's yeah. I know I'm kind of going off the subject here. Like I don't know. I don't know what the price thing is. It's so crazy. It, it all depends. You know, it's so hard to pinpoint. I I, I paid two dollars for a game. I really enjoyed it for like a week, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you and I think it was sixty dollars too. Enjoyed it for two days. Yeah, it all depends. It's, yeah, it's weird. It, it really, it really comes down to you. But man, I don't know. I, I don't think they go could go above eighty bucks. Okay. For just like oh, this is a you know like a sixty dollar game now it's eighty bucks. It right. could not go above that. I think that's. I think that money would leave it, because it's so expected now. It's such an ingrained thing. For like, I don't know when it started. How how much were GameCube games and PS2 games? Fifty anyone, bucks. Anyone know? Fifty. They, they were, were fifty dollars. You guys are right. As a matter of fact, that generation pretty much introduced the lining of uh, the standardized fifty dollars a game. Yeah, sixty was three sixty in PS3, and the Wii was fifty. Yeah, and then the, yep, Wii, then Wii, the Wii, Wii U with finally went to sixty. I remember that. Yep. No, it's mm-hmm. interesting. Uh. I'm curious to see because yeah I'm curious to see what will happen yeah how all their stuff works out what they think they need to charge for a game now okay like next yeah. generation if they're you know if there is each system will have their own next generation I guess yeah we'll see what happens but that's interesting <laughs> anyone else I, I feel like I've talked you're right. too long you're right what about, Jack you got anything you want to add on that one hmm well when it comes to my personal preferences for the type, like, how much I would like to spend on a game or something like that. I'm notorious when it comes to getting plenty of games for, like, dirt cheap or whatever because I normally like looking for deals. So, in actuality, the type of point, you know, my limit would be the actual $60. Then and there, you know. If I'm getting one game for $60 or something like that, it's got to be a goddamn good game that I want to play. So, I am less likely to take a chance on a bunch of games which I have hear good stuff about, but I'm not sure if I will be interested in. And that just, that just come that just like, uh, just gives me, it's just like something I used to do too. Like, whenever I would go through high school and I would only spend like only so much for certain games, because hey, that was the money I had and that's pretty much I had to pick a couple games which probably were like $20 a pop and do this and do that. The good thing about today, in terms of today's game, gaming landscape and stuff, people may think that games are pretty fucking expensive now, which, yeah, there are some DLC things, but a lot of them are not necessary. As a matter of fact, I would actually make the point that games are cheaper now than they've ever been, because of the entry points to certain games you can go to, you can play free games on your mobile devices or your PC or wherever the hell you want to do. You can still pay for, like, AAA experiences and stuff. You can always wait for them to go down in price or whatever. But as for, eh, you know what, just as for my preferences and stuff like that, my actual limit is, like I said, $60. I don't like, I don't even like spending over $50 for, like, a game, like, one single game, because there's no really any guarantee that I'm going to enjoy it for the full duration of the week. You know, because I've had experiences in the past where I've bought a full game, like, for 50 or $60, and I have not even fucking touched it, like, in, like, months, sometimes maybe, like, even a year after an initial purchase, because I've been so occupied with everything else, you know, it's like, but, 
Yeah, that's pretty much my extent on it. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I guess for me then, I would it be fair to say that I probably buy more games than anybody else on this show. Probably. Yeah. Especially now. As far as like the big, the I guess <laughs> triple A as far as the physical titles. Um, so I, I probably buy a dozen games a year or so, give or take. Um, mm-hmm. Some years, maybe 15, so there's been years I bought 20. Um, and I buy a lot of my games on day one. Like I'm, I'm not a patient person when it comes I'm to the like, same way. Like if there's a game, like Justin's like sometimes he's just like, I'll wait and see. Like he, you're definitely more patient than I am. Uh, especially lately. Uh, yeah, I wasn't like that two years ago. But like as far as like a No Man's Sky, like I bought that fucking hype and I bought it. <laughs> I went to the store after work the day one and bought it. You know, it's like I am the person. Like I'll do that shit. You know, and it's like, um, I'll say this. Like, I, there's definitely games that, like, that would be day one buys. I would, like I said, Mass, if, uh, if Mass Effect Andromeda, or uh, Andromeda came out, it was 80 bucks, I would, I'd be okay with, I mean, would I be okay paying $20 more? No. But I would do it, because I fucking love the other three Mass Effect games. Uh, Ma- uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, uh. Like I, I've said, I said it back when, I, when the first game came, came, that game first came out. If I would have paid a hundred bucks for that. I, at first, I'd probably be a little bummed about, but I would have fucking done it because it's fucking Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, it's Metal Gear Solid. Other games like though, I look at like going into like a Doom. Um, if that was a hundred bucks or eighty bucks, I don't know if I would have. Going into it, just yeah, you know, not knowing what it is. The you know the pleasure of hindsight. Fuck yeah, eighty bucks. I'm in. You know, but. Yeah. Um, I think that would be I think 80 bucks would be my limit but I would not buy I'd be way more pickier way about what I buy and I would definitely be more like like a, a jack is where it's just like I'll wait two months and I'll get the game for half the price yeah. and I it's like there's games I've bought and it's just like I wish I would've got that for, I wish I would've waited two months to get that but that's just yeah. not who I am as a gamer um I don't know I just yeah there's certain games like you're talking about Breath of the Wild like I'm trying to think there's not a game I'm hyped about like that much as you are probably is for Breath of the Wild, um, but like I quietly look, hyped, yeah. Like, but like a South Park or a Last Guardian, I I pay eighty bucks for that. You know, I would be okay yeah. paying eighty bucks for that. Just going off of like going into it. I mean, obviously, going hindsight, maybe not. But yeah, um, if I look at like a, a Mafia Three, I I'm really excited for that game. But if it was a hundred bucks, I would not by buying it. Yeah. I would wait. And I'd probably wait a couple months so it's cheaper, or at least wait to see what people are saying about it, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of curious, like, because um, it's been such a big topic um, over the last few years, and I've heard it more and more. Uh, I've heard it, it kind of comes up every so often about how games are the most uh, making games is the most expensive there ever been, but the, and they're the cheapest they've ever been to, to buy for co- consumers, which is great for us. I mean, I'm not gonna complain about. I'm not gonna complain about sixty bucks when it's been that basically that price. It's gone up ten bucks in twenty years. Hard to claim about that. Um, yeah. Really, you can argue yeah. 25, 30 years. Um, so, yeah, I, don't, I was just kind of curious, like I said, whether everybody was out on that, because I've heard a lot of different arguments about like people like losing their mind. I've heard the argument, oh, well, they're really expensive to make, so, I mean, you know, so maybe they should go up, things like that. I don't know. Uh, but, I don't know. Yeah. but let's move on. Uh, there was a few news topics to talk about this week. Um, we're going to jump into the first one. With uh, the UK, uh, some real, a lot of retailers, maybe all of them. I'm not sure. I think it's almost all of them. Okay. Um, uh, after October, is it after October? Or is it after is it October? 1st? October is like the last month, I think. Okay. Um, so after October, um, retailers will no, no longer be able to uh, order Wii U's in the, U, the UK. Uh, I remember about this a little bit last week, and. A little surprising because I mean the the NX is coming out in March and usually, I mean you can still like you still find brand new PS3s in stores right now and Xbox 360s. So, uh, does yeah. Jack you want to jump on this one first? Well, yeah. Let's see. Honestly, I'm not really too surprised though. But at the same time, it's like Nintendo hasn't said anything about the NX and now. It's we're hearing rumors now from like a UK retailer that they're not even going to get any more 
orders for Wii U's after a specific date. I mean, that's clear-cut sign that there's going to be another console announcement soon. I mean, there's got to be, you know. Yeah, they said they're ceasing <laughs> production. Oh, really? I didn't know they're ceasing production. Because region locked. Oh, okay. I'll so there wouldn't that. be any more. All right, yeah, makes sense then. I forgot the region lock part. Which yeah. I don't know what, what that really means. It's just like a tiny code they put in there. I don't know. But, mm. yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Jack. Well, it's like what I'm saying, though. It's like, whenever there's a console cycle or something like that, the last bits of the console just go out to retailers and then just uh, just stop after a certain amount of time. Unless it's like an extra, extraordinary case, like, say, the PlayStation 2. But, uh, honestly, I'm not too surprised if this actually is true. <laughs> But uh, I could totally see, say, in January or something like that, just retailers just not getting, like, Wii U at all inside the U.S. I mean, considering how the sales have went for the system and in general and stuff, I bet they'd be happy just to get rid of the console. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, since even, like, at a lot of retailers' spots that I've went to, say, like, Walmarts and GameStops, there's constantly Wii U consoles for sale. And stuff, and sometimes they're there for months. But yeah, you want to go first? Uh, I can. Yeah. Um, a couple things. Looking into this, yeah. I mean, what they sold thirteen million uh, consoles worldwide. Um, so maybe maybe they have a shit ton sitting in a warehouse right now, uh, and they maybe they sold out faster in the UK than they thought. Could be something like that. Like you said, it could be chip. Could be something like a something in the code or something like maybe a simple update on the on the uh going on when you plug it online makes it work in their areas and others i don't know that side of it um but just looking at this if this is coming i mean it's weird because it's uk only uh, but i can see this eventually becoming a worldwide thing where a couple things could happen one it's kind of it's kind of like the amiibo kind of thing where it's like these like shortages kind of thing it might make people more uh Maybe we'll get some extra a boost take of sales last, out of this. Take the last stock. Yeah, try to get rid of mountains or yeah. whatever they have. I don't know. Just like they'll give them like this false sense of maybe not even a false sense, but like maybe people think, oh man, these aren't going to be hard to find here soon. These might be collectible or whatever. Like I better get one of these now. So maybe we'll get a nice jump in sales before the index comes out, kind of thing. Um, two, I look at it like this: going off the idea. Um, that the Breath of the Wild is an NX Day 1 launch and it comes out with the Wii U. You, It's fair to say what of those 13 million people that have a Wii U out there, 8, 9 million of those are probably going to get an NX um, around launch, if not fairly soon afterwards. Because uh, obviously it seems like the Wii U, a lot of that is the hardcore game, the Nintendo fans that are getting, those, that, getting that console. Um, so maybe it's a good way of getting... Um, not only those people, majority of people are already going to get an NX, probably going to get Breath of the Wild on that console. You're going to make, so, the Breath of the Wild is going to be on both consoles. There's a shortage now out there. It's going to be hard to find Wii U's. So you're going to force people to buy your new console yep. to get Breath of the Wild, which is fucking genius if that's the case. I don't know if that's the case. I'm, this is the theory I have that if, and maybe it's just like they're ceasing production because they don't sell with the shit in the UK. They don't, but... I think you're also right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple things, but yeah. I think you're right about that. Yeah, uh, that's like the biggest thing I had, though. Go ahead. Uh, no, like I agree with you guys on all your the business stuff. Uh, the first thing I thought was like, it's like I, you know, I know like the NX is coming sometime, you know. But, like, it, it does feel weird, like, finally, like, oh, it's the first sign of like, actually, whoa. They can't order any more Wii U's there. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, to me, you know, I got the Wii U as soon as I could. It was like a week after it came out. I was like going around every store. I finally found one at Walmart. Uh, from day one, when I got Nintendo Land, I loved this console. Like just, just, uh, I don't know. Everything about it is cool to me. And like, there was definitely some time, especially towards like, actually throughout its life, that it had like a uh, lack of uh, games, which to, to me is totally, uh, because it didn't really have third party support because first party wise, they were 
cranking out games, in my opinion, for like the first three years. Especially after like the, the first fall, it really started. And there was droughts there too. But uh, just just overall, it's like, it was, it's, it's like, it was the first system of this generation. Uh, I played on it even when I got a PS4. I played on the Wii U way more than the PS4. Because the PS4 also didn't have lots of games for a long time. But it eventually did, and now, now I play the PS4 more. And I use it more for, like, watching, like, Netflix and stuff. It's, like, a little, you know, it's faster. Um, I, don't, I don't know. This, like, the games on it, I don't, I just can't find anywhere else. Uh, I feel like it's gonna be, it's a very underrated console. To me, it's sad. The story of the Wii is sad to me. Because it's kind of funny to me because people really want, like, Nintendo's next console to be a very normal system. And the Wii U is a very normal system. To me, it's arguably the, arguably the most normal system they've ever made. Uh, yes, it has lots of technologies inside of it, uh, but they're, none of them, except for the the uh, non leg like remote play stuff, is something they've never used before. Like, uh, it just interests me. Like the control schemes, like very normal. Uh, it just kind of a uh, yeah. It's and and to me, the name's not the problem. It was their marketing. Like, the more I thought about the name, it's almost like, actually, like, if you were to think about the name, now I, I, I always thought it was kind of a weird name, but now that I think about it, it's like, that makes perfect sense. No. We, you, it's like, I, pod, mm -hmm. but we, you. It's like the exact same thing, but, like, yeah. it has the U at the end instead of the I at the beginning of pod. It's like, I know exactly what they're trying to do, and I think, I think you do, everyone knows, too, what they're trying to do. It just, it's a shame to me. But I'm, I'm glad that it maybe it happens so Nintendo realizes, like, I don't know, like, they need to just step it up, especially in marketing. Yeah. I think, to me, that's, like, going to be one of the most important things. And just find a way to fit into this ever-changing uh, landscape of video gaming. I know I kind of was going off tangent here, but that made me think of all this stuff. And it's like, I don't know where the Wii U's going to be in my top, like, list of favorite Nintendo consoles but uh they has got one more game coming out this year like one big game one big game I can think of besides Breath of the Wild but I don't really count that because it's coming out in both yeah uh but uh Color Splash and it's like yeah it's, just, it's, it's, it's like a console that was destined for so much more and just obviously as a business they, they can't they cannot con continue to support a, a marketing uh economic failure no, and it just doesn't make sense, and I understand why. It's just kind of, it's kind of sad in a way. It's weird. No, it's like my first system on my own. Yeah, I went and bought, and I have it on my own that I really like. I've kind of had like a kind of fell in love with it in a weird way. If you can fall in love with a machine, I just like all these little things about it. But, yeah. Singularity starting right here. Singularity. <laughs> Falling in love. <laughs> no, I I agree with you. I I think the. Nintendo went a, maybe a little cocky with the with the Wii U, thinking that, I mean, you can, it's, we talked about this before, but I think they hit lightning in a bottle twice in the same time with DS and the Wii. Yeah. And I think they went in a little cocky with the 3DS, thinking the DS name meant more than it did, and the Wii name, and thought that we, oh, we could just release this, not really explain what this is with marketing, and people will buy it. Right. And they found it on both ends. No, that's not the case. <laughs> and nobody bought the 3DS for a long time, and then and nobody really bought the Wii U just in general. Yeah, and I know I and, and the 3DS luckily began it so well. I think it sold over 60 million units. Yeah, I mean they wide. but they came out way overpriced. Oh, totally, totally. And both systems did. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of things that go against it. And the the fact that your biggest game for the first year is Super Street Fighter 4 3DS. Is that's pretty much a bad <laughs> launch style. Yeah. The year old no. game at that point, yeah, <clears throat> uh, yeah. I don't know. It's just it's sad to me, personally. Yeah, but I'm very hopeful to the future, and I will always remember the Wii U as so far, anyways. I will still game. remember <laughs> you, Wii U. <laughs> Wii U. <laughs> I will remember Wii U. Wii U. <laughs> remember Wii? Yeah. No, I don't know. And I, I, I uh, real quick. And I think this tells me that Nintendo's next console will have a 
special thing about it. That's not just the home console to handheld thing. But that could be special enough. It it's, definitely could be. Because there really hasn't been anyone that did it like that. Where like that actually is dedicated to doing that. Uh, but yeah. But I, because seeing, look at the numbers, GameCube is like the Wii U. GameCube is the most normal console they had. Yeah. It was one of the most powerful ones that generation, and it sold, it was the only second worst selling one to this one. Yeah. So when they look at the math, they're not going to do that again. Yeah, they can't. So be be ready for something strange. Yeah. That's what I want to tell you. Like I said, they can't, really can't, I don't know if they can afford, I mean, they could afford it, but I don't know what will happen if they, yeah. if they come out and flop again. I'm so, I'm just patiently interested. Oh, I'm no longer I patient. <laughs> I, mean, I stopped stop being impatient because like, I'm just like whatever you know this is going to happen when it happens nope hashtag pop Nintendo <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah that's yeah I just want to get that out there huh. but yeah that's all for me okay. for, about that topic well we're going to jump on to, we're, we're going to stick with Nintendo and we're going to discuss Nintendo also recently announced the NAS Classic that is coming out to uh, Japan uh, there's unsurprisingly to quote Justin, <laughs> looks like the Famicom, <laughs> which honestly I have no. I said yeah. this when they first announced the classic um, uh, a few months ago for America. I had no interest in that. I kind of want the Famicom one. It looks cool. It looks fucking. And it'd be cool to actually have like something different. Why can't we have that one? I would might actually be able to get it. Yeah, but I can't yeah. read Japanese. Oh, Japanese, that's true. If if they release one like uh, like a small like run of them here, I got you. like that. Yeah, I'm, or if you could switch like the language in there somehow. Yes, that'd be cool. Maybe you get rid of the bullshit stuff. region lock stuff. I don't know. <laughs> hey, they did it with Virtual Boy. You might do it with the next system. Maybe that's what scared him. That that was what sunk the Virtual Boy. It could afraid. be. <laughs> it wasn't the shitty graphics. More games came out in Japan. <laughs> All twenty five of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just put that in there because that was kind of neat. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people really like the way the Famicom looked, and Super Famicom. People hate the Super Nintendo here. I actually like it the way it looked to me. Yeah. Because they have like colorful buttons I like the, there. So. I always like the top loader myself, the NES top loader. Mm. That's kind of cool. That's cool. I like if, it. If I, if, honestly, if I can have one though, it'd be the Angry Video Game Nerds, the toaster one. Yeah. That's pretty fucking bad. I have that one. <laughs> I like the top loader. It's more, it's much better though. That's pretty badass console. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about you, Jack? Oh, <laughs> To be perfectly honest, man, it's like, I like the look of the Famicom and stuff like that, but at the same time, dude, it's like, I, I, I just really don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Japan only, dude. It's like, I like, I like the concept of the NES Mini and stuff like that. I actually got a chance to see a preview by IGN's, like, Jose Otero today a lot of the layouts a lot of the things and the emulation stuff is better a lot better looking than it is for like the wii and like the wii u's virtual console versions i mean things are considerably lighter things you can actually adjust things to see either pixel perfect you can do like a 4-3 sort of resolution mode or you can just kind of do the old crt (laughs) sort of setting you know see how it looked at an old crt and uh i think that's really cool there's a lot of interesting options with uh, the setup on the NES Mini itself and I have stuff. I a question but... for you real quick. Yeah. Do you yeah. know it comes to the HDMI cord? Yeah, it actually does, awesome. I believe. That's but awesome. one of the main it cons should, of... <laughs> one of the main cons of it, though, is like the NES controller that comes with it, though, is only like about... I think oh, so. Yeah, it's, it's not that bad. long at all. Oh. That, is, that is actually so a you need some bad sort of decision. A... That might be a game. So you either need like some sort of extension cord possibly with it or maybe even like something else in general, you know? It's like yeah. It's almost like they're wanting people to experience but, it like yeah. they used to. Which get close to the TV. <laughs> I guess, but it's kinda weird. With your seventy inch fucking screen TV. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean <laughs> I was wondering about that too if they have extensions. That's that's the worst part about it to me is the three foot cord. Dude, but then again, you can just find extension things on Amazon and just order them. Yeah, as long as they have them. <laughs> Possibly. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised well, I if guess they sell separately or something. Can can you use a regular controller in it? Uh, the NES? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, then you definitely could buy it. It does have the ports for it. Yeah. Still be weird. I, I imagine they're going to make, like, there's going to be a third party out there that's going to make a long cord. extension cords. Yeah. yeah. I'd like, do the same thing for Or the, wireless. Because this thing's going to be PS4. huge for, like, uh, casual fans, 
So you want to make that shit as easy to, easily to find as possible. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it'll definitely be a huge for casual game. Hope I think that's yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Could be the most highest selling console since the Wii. I really think that it will sell more this year than anything. It else will. Because I hear people talking about that system. They do not play video games at all. This is kind of cool. I'm very exactly, and that's a good sign them. right there. It's cheap. They have a lot of yeah. games. Yeah. Costs as much as a video game. Yeah. $60 for 30 classic NES games, most of which are awesome. So, yeah, yeah of course. You get four save states for each game or something, I heard. I think it's like four save states just general. Oh. Honestly. Really? I think that's how it works, you know? You have four dedicated saves, like, like save state slots and stuff, so oh. you get to switch back and forth. I think that's what it was talking about in the preview I saw today. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Interesting. <laughs> All right, oh. then. Um, I think that might wrap up the show this week, actually. Um, so, uh, Jack, do you have a retro game of the week for us? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. I'm just thinking. <laughs> How about Jazz Punk? That's not a it's retro 2014. game. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to come up with like a good, like retro game of the week right here. It's it just gets so hard sometimes because it's like I've played so much fucking games that just one doesn't really set up its mind for me. Uh, let's see. Why don't you pick a console? Vers- uh, Virtual Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I never played the Virtual oh, Boy. Uh, Sega Game Gear. <laughs> the Game Gear. I think I've only played like one game for that. Okay, well, let's play. <laughs> All right. Um, the Jaguar. Oh, this is retro. I was going to say something else. Just as I was like, Doom. Jaguar. No, I've never played anything on the Jaguar, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> we. I mean, I don't know. What's retro? You know? What's retro to you guys? <laughs> 2016, September 29th, and back. <laughs> Anything that's anything that's not the current generation, that's what I would normally limit. Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. DS. Alright. Alright, for the DS, Contra four. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Contra is the thing about Contra is stuff, it's like it's a great series of games and stuff like that. It started with the NES. It actually had two games for the NES. There's Contra, then you had Super C. He had the Alien Wars and the Super Nintendo, but the one that I've really loved to, I really loved playing back in the you know, back in the day when it first came out though was Contra Four and stuff. This game was fucking awesome because I think it was by the same developers like as uh well, I, I thought it was either Wave Forward or somewhere else that uh helped like create this game and stuff. It was just fast, it was intense, a lot of in pay, like a lot of intense like moments and stuff. Hard as hell, too. As a matter of fact, the only way you could have beaten that game is if you beat it on the hardest difficulty level. The absolute hardest difficulty level. Which, by the way, yeah, that's it's kind of like how Double Dragon 2 kind of locked away certain people from playing through the entirety of the game if they only set it to one, like, the lowest difficulty level or, like, the normal. Which, yeah, it's a shitty way of doing it, but... But uh, anyway, it's like you you go across these like these crazy ass stages, all these alien monsters and stuff. But then after you finally beat the big boss, there is a big thing at the end of it where you can actually unlock the original Contra to play on the DS. <laughs> yeah, there's this like this there's a gigantic boss or something like that that like spans two screens, both the touch screen and the regular screen, and you have to try to work your way up to try to like. Like, just shoot at the weak point of the boss and stuff before, like, uh, you have to dodge all these projectiles and all this other shit. It's like, it's basically, <laughs> basically Contra 4 is kind of like, uh, like anxiety of the video game, pretty much. Because it's like, it's like, oh god, I gotta, I gotta dodge this, I gotta dodge that, oh shit, 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 <laughs> You know, it's kind of funny, it's like, I'm getting kind of jitters and stuff like that, just like, uh, by thinking about that damn game, thinking back on it, you know, it's like... It was fun. You could pick as a whole bunch of different, like, like Contra characters from past games, like Bill Riser and all these other shit. 
So you have these different character sprites you could play as from the previous Contra games, which, hey, it had its, like, fun little quirks and stuff about it. But uh, I remember the level design being pretty creative and stuff. I mean, you were going across, like, cities, doing this, doing that and stuff. Jungles, you know, just the, just the classic, like, Contra stuff. So it was just pure action and adrenaline fun and stuff. So, yeah, that's the retro game of the week, Contra 4. Ooh, all right. Well, very cool. Never um, played it. I feel like we should do this every week, but we just pick a console. Yeah. yeah. We make them. We make All them right. Turns. There we go. All right. Next week's Jazz Punk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jazz Punk's good, guys. I don't know if you heard, heard me say that or not. Um, so, anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to hear more from us, we are on Facebook. We have a page and group. It is Gen Gaming Podcast. So, like and join us on there. On Twitter, we are at Gen Gaming Pod. So, follow us on there. On YouTube, we are at Generation Gaming, and on Twitch, we are at Gen Gaming Podcast as well. So, like, join, and follow us on all of those. We greatly appreciate it. Also, on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. It's great. On iTunes, give us five stars. Four is fine too. We will accept. Uh, anything else, go away. Um, <laughs> but thank you guys so much for listening. I was your host. I was Tyler. I was Justin. And I have been the Jack of Hearts. And until next week, everybody, GG. It's been like over a year and you still haven't figured out how you're going to do that, Justin. I figured out how. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I got one for you. Because all you have is this one. This one's free. Hashtag fuck Nintendo. Bye, guys. Aw, oh, I can't say that. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's Justin's new slogan <laughs> now. You can't help but say it. All right, how about Boner Riffin? <laughs> Bonerific? Bonerific. Uh, yeah. Next week, guys. Boners for president. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs>